Mm-hmm. Oh, we're live! <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Shannon with uh, Prairie.com and I am here with the feelers. We're so hey. excited to have you guys. How you doing? <laughs> um, so Pat and Gina Neely, you guys just came from The View, I yes. heard. Yes. How did that go? It was so much fun. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's a lovely cast. It's all the girls were having a good time. Like a big party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I just sit back and eat it up. You got all these girls <laughs> and they're talking in there. But we had, we had this huge table with all of the food um, from our new book that we mm-hmm. didn't talk about. And so uh, the best part about it was I was able to eat. Well, well everybody was eating. Yeah. I didn't get a chance. I, could, I can only talk because everybody was just like right. eating. It was like eating. a big buffet. So it we was had food yeah. family right. style. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. And when when does that show air? When can tomorrow. 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 Okay. Yes. Awesome. Big surprise so because we had something for everyone. I mean, even vegans. There was yeah. something on the table. Yeah. Right. Southern vegan cooking. Yes, oh, yeah. ma'am. You don't want yes. out of it. All right. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, you guys mentioned your book, and it came out yesterday, right? Yes. yes. It's, so this is available in bookstores um, back home with the Neelys. It's a beautiful book, um, and it's all your family recipes, recipes from your childhood. Mm-hmm. Down home southern cooking. Yeah, and, and I love the rusticness of it. I was telling um, Jordan because I love the colors. It has the Tiffany blue. And if you kind of take this page out, this is what I love the best the distressedness of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of like Tuscany meets the South. Yeah. <laughs> nice like that. But you know what's that really texture. cool about uh, Back Home is Jean and I finally decided to write this is our third cookbook. Bring it back home, and you asked the question of these generational recipes Mm -hmm. to some degree, because these are recipes that um, bring back our childhood memories of our grandmothers and grandparents cooking in the kitchen, but obviously we put our own spin on them. We made some of the dishes a little lighter. Uh, There's uh, fantastic cooking techniques, uh, everything from smoking meat to seasoning meat to pulling the membrane off pork ribs, all of those things are right there in the book. So not only is it a book with great recipes, but you're going to learn something, and you're going to learn a little something about Jean and I growing up in the but kitchen. That, and it also has like great utensils, like we talk about the cast iron skillet. You know, you don't use, you don't hear people talking about the cast iron skillet, even how to season a cast iron skillet, and mm-hmm. what it really does to the food and open the flavors up. So it really goes back to at the beginning, like when you were a child and you watch your grandmother or your mother do it, and you're kind of wondering what well, she's going to do with that big skillet and what makes that flavor so great. So it, it kind of, and, and you think about it, the book is almost like a full circle. It is. The first book was more about Pat and our families and how we got together. Right. The second book was a celebration cookbook, which talked about every, you know, holiday and even some new ones that you can incorporate into your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And now this book goes back to how it all began. Right. So you really can, you know, it's like a 360. You came full circle with the family. Oh, so That's speak. awesome. And yeah. also, I was reading that you've also updated a lot of the recipes and made them more accessible. And yes, and if you don't have certain utensils, how to do it this way and how to do it that way. Yeah. Or if you can't have certain things in your diet, how you can change that as well. Mm-hmm. well one of the dishes that uh, I think um, comes to mind is that my grandmother always fried catfish. And now that everybody's eating a lot healthier, we did a blackened catfish. Mm -hmm. You know, we did a lot of chicken, but we did a lot of roasted chicken and grilled chicken as Mm -hmm. opposed to so much fried chicken. So we're we're, we're obviously making our our dishes a lot healthier, and you'll see it through this book. Yes, we want that waistline is there. (laughs) You know, actually, one of of our readers... um, was asking about that. She said, <laughs> hold on, let's see if I can find it here. Oh, Miriam R. said, I can't help but notice you both look slimmer. What are you doing differently? So, Eating better. Yeah. Eating better, exercise, and of course our lives stay busier. We're empty nested now, so we have time to play more golf. I'm drinking more. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm actually spending more time with the girls where I'm right. shopping, we take trips and stuff together. So really just kind of having that time, that me time that you didn't have before because you were so focused in on family and the kids. So now you can kind of go back and just kind of think about you and what you want to do. And what I got to tell people now is it's really come to a time where if you could take, a, you know, mammograms are so important, getting your health, you know, pap smears and things like that, taking care of yourself and getting that, not from vanity, but the inside out. And I think we've kind of grown much of that. And throughout, and should, and, and throughout the book, our, our dishes are reflective of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a mash 
cauliflower as opposed to mashed potatoes. Right. And quite frankly, it tastes just as good as mashed potatoes, but it's a mashed cauliflower with chives. And um, a great way to trick your kids to eat something healthy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of roasted like vegetables and yeah. things of that nature. Um, Jean and I, you know, one of the things that we really love and we wanted to share in this book is there's so many beautiful sections. We do pickling. We do jams. Mm -hmm. There's a breakfast section. There's a sandwich section. There's a smoking section. There's an entree section. Obviously, Gina's cocktails but and desserts. Not alcohol plus, yeah. Right. Not just so many cocktails, but ones that you can either have with alcohol or without. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think um, everyone, all of our readers, love you guys, and they're so excited to hear that you are coming. Everyone wants to know what have you guys been up to aside from the cookbook? Like what? What's your everyday like now? What are, any projects on the horizon? You know, I guess first off for me was kind of getting adjusted to being empty nested. Mm -hmm. Just kind of go through those emotions. And then we've been speaking on this. I've been just speaking on the circuit. I did um, a deal with George Long with the weight loss campaign for a year. Um, and then I go out and speak to women just about balancing their lives and how we can have it all, but still have some me time. So we've been doing a lot on the speaking circuit right. and just kind of getting out and just meeting with different people. So it's, it's, it's been fun it's to broaden the horizon and not just talk about food, but talk about food, how it affects you emotionally and healthy, you know, and, and ways that you can make it better for you and how it's time to get back to the family. Mm -hmm. Not so everybody's at the table texting and doing everything, mm -hmm. but just having a basic conversation like the old days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, you know, we put a lot of energy in this book. It took uh, quite a while to mm -hmm. put it all together and uh, develop our recipes and tell our stories. But we have been busy. Um, I'm super excited. I mean, this summer the book is coming out. Um, I just became the national spokesperson for Family Dollar. And Family Dollar is making this huge push this summer because they're bringing food products mm -hmm. into, the, into their stores. Right. And yeah. it's high quality top brand food products. So you can follow them at My Family Dollar or me at Pat Neely Barbecue King for more information. Then Jean and I plan to do some bigger things this summer. Um, we may do something with the troops across around the country. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, we're at a point now in our lives where we've raised our kids. We can enjoy writing great books like Back Home. Um, and pretty much do some of the things we want to do. You know, I'm so happy for her now because she gets an opportunity to have girls night out and really spend time with her girlfriends. Um, and Gina is, is doing so many things in the community now that time didn't allow early on. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been so busy. Uh, she did this huge fundraiser. Um, what was it? Taste for Tennis. Taste for Tennis. Yeah. Uh, I guess like what several months ago and right. I, I knew she was going to meetings and everything but I wasn't that in tune so finally showtime the big night shows up and I go and there's like gosh it had to be over a thousand people there yeah. and all of and they raised all of this money for kids to play tennis right but to play tennis because normally the average child wouldn't have the opportunity to be a part of say a racket club or something like that so mm -hmm. what it forces what they call a summer camp they get tennis lessons, management lessons, you know, sportsman-like skills. They get also scholarships. So it kind of broadens their horizon, almost like golf would be for the That's great. Person. So what I wanted to do is just kind of expand that and show some other opportunities and way to have a full life and, yeah. and have the accessibility to do it. So that's what the fundraiser was about. We were very proud of it. So it's rewarding really for me to walk in because I was not a part of it. And... Gina co-chaired this whole event and pulled this big event off, mm -hmm. and it turned out to be such a success. Yeah. I mean, I, I did not believe there was going to be that many people there. So when you ask what we're doing now, we're still having an impact on people's lives, but in different ways as opposed to just doing television yeah. mm -hmm. or just going out and doing um, uh, yeah, and we're doing it. And we're doing it together, but we're also doing a lot of individual stuff, which is also cool because mm -hmm. uh, she had a chance to not have me involved, which was a good thing, because yes. she could stand out there and just really do her own thing and not yeah. have to worry about, yeah. oh, I don't want to do this, or I want to do it this way, I want to do it that way, and do her own thing, yeah. and I was really proud of that. Because Pat is very, um, I would say, if you compare both of us, he's very food-driven, 
um, or relationship lifestyle, I did this enough to swear how to keep the cookies from crumbling, mm -hmm. how to maintain everything all together and not fall apart. So, you know, I'm more about relationships and how to connect that and keep things together and, and hold that together, whereas he is all about the food and the grilling. So, See, I would have been more concerned about what, what they're serving there. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's just like now you guys balance each other out, right? Because now we're getting to be more about individual selves as well as, you know, working as a couple, but you right. can also get those individual things that you desire personally that he does too as well, and we can get that done. Mm -hmm. That way everybody's satisfied, which right. is the end of the game. That's great. So I'm going to take some more reader questions yeah. here. Um, speaking about relationships, Jessica has asked, you guys spend so much time together. Uh, at work and at home, how do you prevent from becoming just business partners and keep the romance alive? Ooh. You know, I, I think that, you know, Gina told me one thing many, many years ago, way before television, when we were just running a restaurant, is balance. Mm -hmm. And there's a time to turn it on and a time to turn it off. And oftentimes when we get home and there's downtime, that's the time that we spend together and work is not discussed. Uh, if you're partners and you're working together, you have to find a time yeah. to shut that down and then be able to bring it back up. It comes back to really creating boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like Pat loves to play golf. I have no interest in sports mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. I can shop. That's a sport. Right. Yeah, it's I like to hang out. It's <laughs> that's that's a sport. High five. That's <laughs> pretty that's expensive. Fun. That's pretty. Woo! Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a gold medal this year for sure. Okay. <laughs> so really just creating boundaries and allowing that person to just be. You know, something I think so often is people think when they get married, they have to change their life and say, oh, my husband loved this, I need to be a little more like that. You can stay married and still be your individual self. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean about creating boundaries. So you can, so you won't feel like you cheated or mm -hmm. I didn't get to, to do this because I forget, you know, I, I gave that up to him. Mm -hmm. No, you can still get to do that, but there's just a time and place to do it and you create that boundary to do that. Yeah. You live within your own truth. You, absolutely. Yeah. And it's about levels. owning it, too, as you well. Know, yeah. You know, when the kids were younger, we were at a certain level. Now that they're, when they got in high school, it was a certain level. Now they're gone. We're into nested. We're at a whole different level yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And you have to just learn to adjust to those different levels. Mm -hmm. What other questions? All right. We have uh, Megan M. wants to know, if you had to pick one favorite Southern dish, what would it be? One favorite Southern dish. Probably just baked chicken for me. I'm just a chicken girl with root vegetables. I like chicken with carrots and parsnips and like rosemary and thyme kind of mixed in. I just love that flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really easy. Who for was me. it? Megan? Megan. Megan, stop it, girl. <laughs> she asked that you know, I mean, <laughs> one, <laughs> everything. Are you kidding me? I know. I, you know, I'm a grill guy. I mean, you know, I love pork ribs on the grill, whether it's baby back or spare ribs. But uh, steak, potatoes. You know, I put asparagus on the grill. Sorry, yeah. girl, you said one, but it can't be one. You can tell me one type of cooking, mm -hmm. which is smoking or grilling, but not one dish, but it would have to be out on the grill and probably pork ribs. All right. I like it. And there's pork rib uh, recipe in your book here, too. There's yeah. oven. And oven. a good part about yeah. it, this is a.k.a. Apartment, apartment ribs. So you, for people like up here in New York that don't have grills, don't have grills yeah. space for it. Yeah. they can actually have delicious ribs cooked in the oven. And my mother used to cook them this way years ago, way before there was a grill. Uh, and you put you wrap them in foil. Uh -huh. Obviously, you're going to pull the membrane off. You're going to do a lot of steps that we would do in smoking ribs uh, with the dry rub and seasoning them the night before and putting them in the refrigerator. Then the next morning, we're going to pull them out. I'm going to put them in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a basin to, pan and pan. wrap them in foil. <laughs> and then toward the end, <laughs> we're going to get our barbecue <laughs> sauce out and kind of base sauce. Oh, oh, <laughs> Did you notice how Brother Walter just like you said these came out of the oven? She was like, Oh my god, they're so yeah. tender. Oh, yeah. You served them on view today. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, we served a sock soul of Barbara. Yeah, she loves it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I call her Barbara now. Not this is what. Um, okay, so Tammy, uh, Tammy has a question about her mashed potatoes actually. Uh, she says they always get really sticky, but she also, I wanted to say that Tammy loves your shoes. All the time. And, oh, uh, Gina is wearing girl. some amazing shoes. Oh. Yes, they're incredible. Um, and, and Pat, we can't leave Pat yeah. out. Oh. He has some crazy polka dot socks. So she says her mashed potatoes get sticky. Yeah, yeah. Right, there's two things. There's two things that can happen. It's cream cheese and it's the butter. It's the milk. And, the milk. and I always tell people, put less in. 
and then you can add. Yeah. But don't put too much in the way your mashed potatoes are too runny because then you got to boil some more potatoes and put them in. So you start out with just a little bit, mash them. Uh, obviously, I'd li I like to put butter in mine as well. Mm -hmm. But if they're sticking, she doesn't have enough liquid in them, which yeah. means not enough milk and not enough the cream cheese. Cream, cream cheese. cheese is really the secret ingredient. Okay. Keep it creamy. All right. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Oh, okay. So Cheryl Elaine Martinez wants to know, can you give us your best non-alcoholic lemonade recipe? Non <laughs> it's actually in your book because you know what? That's it up online. It is the limeade. Okay. The, um, the berry lim lim blackberry limeade. Blackberry limeade. It is so delicious. Okay. Very easy. And if, if she wanted some friends who have wanted alcohol, like the normal person would. <laughs> 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 you can do a regular picture for the non-alcoholics and put another picture and add some vodka into it. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, the price it's is off. Yeah. Yeah. Top it off. Top it off, huh? Keep everyone happy. Yeah. But it looks really pretty because the lemonade is nice and clear. You see the blackberries in between. So yeah. Very pretty dish, right. and I would suggest serving it in a mason jar just to kind of get that little feel to yeah. the funk feel to it. I like it's really it. Nice, get that seven. Yeah. I'll see if I can get that recipe and I'll put it up online yeah. uh, for you guys. We got you. Um, <laughs> what else do we got here? Uh, best healthy recipes for the summer. What would you say um, is like your go-to healthy dish uh, for the summer coming up? For the summer coming up. We do the picnic I, rice that's pretty healthy. I mean, it's, yeah, a, it's, it it's a rice, and we've got bell peppers and cucumbers, uh, cucumbers tomatoes. and tomatoes, and we make a, a nice light vinaigrette dressing. Mm -hmm. But we also, you know, people are not aware because they know us as being the barbecue family, and they think we cook all of these southern dishes, and we, we do, and we cook these southern comfort foods. But we also, we're conscientious, as you can tell, of what we eat, and we don't eat, you know, just heavy food every day. I like to grill vegetables, and we have a we have a grilling section in there where we've taken vegetables. I think I've got um, um, what are my long stem vegetables? The um, zucchini, the zucchini, mm -hmm. and and we've sliced them, and you know just a little olive oil and season them. We've got some red onions, um, I think some mushrooms, and we just it's very simple. With a little olive oil across the grill, and you're in good shape. That's then we have awesome. Gina's um, another good healthy dish is Gina's. <laughs> confetti collards. Yeah, they're like little ribbons. They're really cute, oh. but, they're, it's, but it's really, really good because I do a lot with collard greens. But if you don't, I mean, I know we're talking about this book, but to me, my favorite grilled vegetables when we do the Caesar salad because you grill romaine lettuce. Yeah. And no one ever thinks to do That's that. It's a nice, smoky flavor to it, and you get the Caesar dressing with it. And it's such a beautiful presentation. Come they on, did it. I like it. They did it and grilled it all, Lady Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. Last question. <laughs> and speaking of which, I think I just heard a little pet name in there. <laughs> yeah, um, Jessica uh, has another question here for us. She says, you guys always call each other by the cutest pet names. Pat, do you have a favorite name that Gina calls you? And Gina, does Pat ever call you a nickname that makes you swoon? Well, she calls me Big Daddy. I mean, that it is what it is. I, I'm not afraid of it. But I have a lot of names. If I could just him. keep his hands off my butt, I think he doesn't even have to say anything. It's, just, it's almost the hand here that. And you did it today on Today Show. I was so embarrassed. I mean, on The View. I did it. You did it. Uh -huh. and you do it without even knowing. He's in trouble. It. And I've kind of went like, uh, it on TV. Good. We'll see if that makes the cut. It felt yeah. good. <laughs> I know. You're right, right? Did it feel good? <laughs> hey, that's 35 years of knowing each other. Gina and I met 35 years ago. So um, I know, adore you guys. You guys are so going. much fun. Thank you. So Thank much fun. you. Um, so we are actually, um, for everyone that's watching, we're giving away five of these cookbooks Woo! signed by them. They're going to sign them right now. Oh, um, yes. So go to pray.com slash Neely's uh, to enter and also post a few recipes from the book. For you guys to uh, test out and enjoy. Yeah, try the very Fantastic. Much. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, thank you for fun. having us. We've had a blast. Thank you. Bye. Let's get in the parade together. <laughs> <laughs>